In today's video, I'm going to do a case study. And I'm going to do a case study for a couple that recently came to us with a net worth of just over $2.4 million and how we are going to be able to save them over $1.7 million in lifetime tax liabilities. We've obviously changed the names and the numbers a bit and the ages a bit for anonymity reasons. But for the most part, this is pretty much the scenario and this is how we're going to be able to help them. So on the screen here, as you can see, we have a blueprint of where they're at. So Charlie and Lucy Brown are 64 and 62, respectively. And as you can see, they have a net worth of over $2.4 million and they have decent size 401k. Charlie has over 1.5 in his 401k and he's got some Roth money. And then Lucy has some rollover IRA money and also a decent size Roth. And they also got some joint brokerage account money in the middle there, as you can see. And then they have a primary home worth approximately $400,000 that is paid for. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, sometimes people are sitting on a retirement tax bomb. And as you can see here on the screen, there here is their tax allocation summary for Charlie and Lucy. They have about just under 1.7 million in tax deferred assets, and then they have about 200 in taxable, and then they have uh, about 8.2% in tax-free or a Roth account. And those, remember, those are our best counts moving forward because we don't pay any tax on those if they're qualified when the money comes out. So we're gonna have something go from 10 to 100, that's where we want it, right? So if we are able to time everything properly with them and thread the needle of their proverbial retirement tax bomb, and we can do Roth conversions and withdrawing from the proper account at the proper time, this is how this is gonna look. So right now, if they do nothing, this is what their tax, tax scenario is gonna look like in retirement. They're gonna retire and then RMDs, required minimum distributions are gonna kick in. They're gonna to have to start taking money out of their account and then it's going to keep growing and then it's going to their RMDs are going to get higher and higher as they age right and not only is that going to affect their income tax rate it's also going to affect their parts b and d medicare premiums and i'm going to show you that too in a bit but what we want to do is we want to do Roth conversions over the first part of their gap years before they have to take RMDs. so it's going to raise their tax a little bit in the in the meantime but then as you can see here, it's gonna really go down and drop afterwards. So we won't have to worry about anything increasing their parts B and D premium. Because anything that costs more money, whether it's technically a tax or not, you got more money going to the government, we're gonna call that a tax, right? So as I mentioned, we can't forget about the income related monthly adjustment amount or the IRMAA, which is the technical term for paying higher Medicare parts B and D premium. And of course, Medicare Parts B and D premium are gonna be affected by your modified adjusted gross income. And they would be very high later on in their retirement if they did nothing and were just sitting on that retirement tax bomb and they had to take their RMDs out. So here is a little scenario on the screen of what would happen if they did nothing, right? Starting out pretty low at the beginning, right? Uh, 65 is when Medicare would kick in. So Parts B and D premium, we're gonna click into Charlie here to break down into it. But this Parts B and D, premium are pretty low, right? And then it creeps up, creeps up, and then all of a sudden, his RMDs get higher and higher. So parts B and D premium get really high, right? Um, and the same thing happens to Lucy, as you can see, low, 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 and then all of a sudden, based off of their modified adjusted gross income, their parts B and D get really high. So what happens when we do a, if we do the Roth conversions, and we withdraw from the proper accounts at the proper time. As you can see, it's gonna, they're gonna go up a little bit at the beginning of their parts B and D premium are gonna be higher with the Roth conversions because that's going to increase their income now, but we're doing that now so that we reduce it later. And look at this, so their parts B and D premium are a little bit higher here. I'm gonna go back and just show you both of them here, but uh, you can see that that's the breakdown. So again, higher, higher, higher. And then once we get done with Roth conversions and um, 2034 or thereabouts, then they drop. See, they drop back down and then they're lower for the rest of their life. Now, if you total that up to see the difference, the difference is gonna be, well, if they're with their current plan, parts B and D premium, what they'd spend in healthcare over their lifetime, which I ran the numbers to age 90 for all of this, is going to be they would spend five hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, and if they do the proposed plan, their parts B and D premium over their lifetime to that same ninety. I know they're different ages, but thereabouts is going to be about three hundred sixty-three thousand dollars, 
And so if you subtract that from the other, that's gonna be about $224,000 in savings, right? So you definitely wanna be cognizant of the parts of BND premium because that's a big chunk of change that you would rather keep in your pocket as opposed to going to Uncle Sam. All right, now next, we're also going to adjust their investment portfolio, both investment allocation and asset location. And have any of you ever heard of Vanguard? Well, they estimate asset location saves clients up to an additional 0.6% per year when done properly. And now what does asset location mean? Well, asset location is placing your more conservative investments in a pre-tax account and more growth-oriented assets in a Roth account. Because if you're gonna have an investment go from 10 to 100, you're gonna want that to come out in the tax-free Roth account as opposed to paying ordinary income taxes on it in a pre-tax account like a 401k, 403b, or a traditional IRA. We can also do tax loss harvesting in a taxable account, and any long-term gains are gonna be taxed at the preferred capital gains and qualified dividends rates, which are gonna be much more advantageous than our ordinary income tax brackets. If we take their approximately $2 million investment nest egg, and we multiply that by 0.6%, well, that's gonna be $12,000 in additional annual savings. And then of course we multiply that by 25 to get them to about age 90, so 25 years. And that's gonna be an additional total $300,000 in lifetime savings. So what do we have in total savings? We take the $1.72 million from properly timing Roth conversions and getting Uncle Sam out of their retirement accounts and the lower tax brackets. We're gonna add the Medicare Parts B and D premium savings of $224,000. And then we add the asset location savings of $300,000. And we're gonna have a total estimated tax savings of about $2.244 or $2,244,000. So by tailoring retirement tax strategies combined with proper income withdrawal planning and proper allocation and location of investments, that's gonna be a very large savings. And this is very real dollars and cents. People usually know that they're giving too much to Uncle Sam in retirement, but this shows a way more accurate picture of what that's estimated to be. And that $2.2 million is either gonna to go to Uncle Sam or it's gonna stay in your pocket. So where do you want that money to go? If you're interested in seeing how you might be able to mitigate a retirement tax bomb like Charlie and Lucy Brown, click on our website, check out our three-step process and schedule an intro call. Once again, Tim Dorman here, founder of Eagle Ridge Wealth Advisors. And if you would like to see how we help our clients get the most out of their financial lives in retirement, please visit us at erwealth.com and we hope to see you there.